G'day, it's Shane Dowling here from kangarooquarteraustralia.com. It's that time of year again when we're doing our Christmas and New Year post. A uh, big thank you to all the supporters throughout the year. Uh, we've had almost 2.4 million page views and it'll be over 2.4 million by the end of the year. And that's average of 200,000 page views a month, which is our biggest year ever. And uh, that couldn't have been done without all the support. Our email subscribers have grown from 4,200 to almost 17,000 and uh, that's been done because I implemented a new uh, email service with a pop-up asking people to subscribe and that's helped drive the traffic. Also the Twitter account has grown from 4,000 uh, followers to over 11,000. Facebook hasn't grown as much, it's grown from roughly 20,000 to almost 25,000 or a bit over I think it is. And uh, YouTube channel, only the last couple of months I've been driving that. I've had a YouTube channel for 10 years, but I've never really driven it. But over the last couple of months, we've been doing uh, regular uh, videos, and that's helped grow up from 800 subscribers in uh, September to over 9,000 now. So it's going really strong, and hopefully it'll go just as strong next year. Uh, we've got the federal election coming up. It has to be uh, held before May. Or, or by May, and uh, from past experience, that should drive a lot of traffic to the website. Driving the traffic to the website, what that does, that uh, that increases the the influence and the voice uh, of the articles that I write, and I write to, in articles in, in relation to the public interest, trying to shine a light on corruption, political corruption, judicial corruption, that sort of thing. So the larger it grows, the uh, more traffic we get. Uh, the more influence we can have and help drive change or play our part anyhow. Um, obviously, in September, the arrest warrant was issued. I've written about that and I'll have a link in the article I publish on Sunday, Sunday the 19th of December. Uh, so you can read about that a bit more. But that wasn't issued by the... Well, it was issued by the court, the New South Wales Supreme Court, but the application for the contempt was uh, from Seven West Media and Channel 7 on behalf of Kerry Stokes, the major shareholder. So that's a large media company trying to silence a small media company who's written numerous articles about corruption at Seven West Media and Seven Network and Kerry Stokes. So that's just the reality of it. There's an arrest warrant uh, still out there for me. Uh, they haven't tried to uh, enforce it yet, but at some stage I suspect they will. But we'll be fighting it, uh, fighting extradition. I'm in Queensland. They'll have to extradite me to New South Wales, firstly. Uh, they'll have to make an application to extradite me in the Magistrates Court. We'll fight it there, and if we lose, we can appeal it to the, new, uh, the Queensland Supreme Court. And obviously if we lose there, we're off to the High Court. And I think I've got very good grounds to appeal it. Uh, I write a judicial corruption website. I've named over 20 judges of the New South Wales Supreme Court for, for being corrupt. So any hearings in relation to contempt against me should have either been heard by an interstate judge, which I made an application or a couple applications for it to be heard by an interstate judge. They refused. And they should have ref re uh, transferred it to Queensland anyhow. And I made multiple applications for that. And again, once again, they refused. But we won't focus on that. We'll just deal with it when we get to it. Um, I think the biggest thing is, to, and I've already spoken about it, the power on the engine behind the website and driving the articles that I write, and a lot of the articles I write about, the old media won't write about them. Uh, they refuse to. Uh, they have their own bias and influence. We uh, act without fear and favour on Kangaroo Court of Australia. Some people have suggested, oh, you only focus on the Liberal Party and National Party. Well, if you go back to uh, 2013 and prior to that, I started publishing in 2011, you'll find a lot of articles about corruption in the Labor Party. But once they lose power, it's the uh, people in power who tend to abuse the pe uh, who are the most corrupt. And obviously, they're the most corrupt because they're in a position to be corrupt. People who aren't in power, the, well, the party who's not in power, they still don't have that uh, opportunity. So that's why there's been a major focus on the Liberal Party and National Party, because they've been in power federally since 2013. And I think in uh, New South Wales, where I was living, um, They've been in power, I think, since 2011, the Liberal Party and Nationals. And I haven't written about Victoria in that uh, much because I don't really follow it that much there. 
And Queensland, I've only been here a couple of years, so over time I might come across more corruption. And I write about it more. But uh, people try and say, oh, you're biased because you're not writing about Labor corruption. Well, if you look back, I have uh, written a lot about Labor Party corruption uh, when they were in power federally. Other than that, uh, I hope you have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And if you've got time, if you want to flick through the articles I've written over the last 12 months, you'll see some articles there that have had influence, whether it be locally or nationally. And uh, it's because of your support I'm able to do that. So uh, other than that, uh, thank you for your time and have a good day.